He showed us that after six days and on the seventh day he rested. And this rest is the Holy Sabbath, which God rests from working six days. However, it's important to mention that this seventh day experience is not only the weekly Sabbath that even to this day, the Jewish people and some people of the Christian faith hold to, but this Sabbath is eternal. Since the Lord is eternal and he exists outside of time, his Sabbath is not a once in a lifetime type of thing. His Sabbath is perpetual and eternal and never ending. So when he finished the work after six days, he was finished. You got to follow what I'm saying. So the third thing, and I'm almost done, is that society is becoming so liberated that they're taking God's clear guidelines and his commands and they are looking at them as opportunities to become free by transgressing them what am i talking about there is this thing of sexual liberation gym gender liberation and even in some cases behavioral generation or liberation because what we're seeing is that the quote-unquote guidelines and standards that have been established for thousands of years are now looked at as things that kept us back or in bondage. The fact that I say, and I'm going to come out and say it, that I'm a man is now an issue because that may be offensive to a person that does not identify in that way. Now, I'm not telling you to go around and disrespect people. But what I'm saying is that the confusion in the earth is coming from people and from a spirit that wants to blur the lines that God has placed so that men will transgress them. But one thing that I notice about the church all the time, and I'm gonna to talk tonight, so I need y'all to follow me. What I notice about the church all the time is that we put so much emphasis on Pentecost, which is do all of the emphasis. Let's not get this wrong. But what we fail to do is to talk about what happens afterward. We, we spend so much time in anticipation waiting on God to pour out his spirit on one day. But if we think like God, he used that day to spark something that will come after. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, something happened and something began to happen afterward that was sparked as a result of that day. And so what we have to do as saints is stop being prisoners of the moment i'm talking to somebody we have allowed tradition we've allowed year after year ceremony and ritual many of us take pentecost just as a way to jump and shout and speak in tongues which is all a part of the package which is fine but it's not good enough anymore to simply receive a touch from god on pentecost and nothing happened afterward god wants us to get into this post pentecost reality Welcome again to the Encounter Live broadcast. We are so this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Welcome all to the Encounter Live broadcast. My name is Minister Glenn Husbands, and I'm so excited to see you all on tonight in the presence of the Lord, worshiping and hearing what God has to say on tonight. How many are glad to be alive and well? I'm excited for what the Lord is doing. I'm just so overjoyed and thrilled at just the thought that I'm alive and well in today's world with Jesus, able to live out the purpose that God has in store for me. How many love Jesus for that? Y'all, tonight I have a word from the Lord. I'm telling y'all, God is going to speak to us tonight. And I need everyone, before we get started, to press that share button. Share, share, share. Share this video to your timelines. And um, feel free to tag somebody in the comments and let them know that you're watching the Encounter Live broadcast on tonight. We're going to go into something that I believe the Lord has um, impressed upon me to share. But before we get too deep into the word tonight, I want to do some quick housekeeping and share 
that on tomorrow and on Saturday, tomorrow and Saturday, my brother, the elder Edward Brownlee III, will be ministering at Deliverance Church of East Gadsden at 6.30 nightly. Uh, my brother will be preaching tomorrow and I'll be preaching on Saturday. I'm telling y'all, y'all don't want to miss this. If you're in the Gadsden, Alabama area or nearby, um, be sure to come out and support us as we go forth in the word of the Lord for the people of God. I'm expecting a mighty move of God. And as the flyer says, it shall be an Holy Ghost gathering, an Holy Ghost gathering, two men, two nights, but only one Holy Ghost. And we're going to bring him with us as we come forth for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I need everyone, if you can, to join us this weekend for a special word from the Lord for Deliverance Church of East Gaston. All right. I'm ready to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We appreciate you, God, for tonight. We thank you for this time and this opportunity to come before your presence and to be here with you, God, to hear what you have to say unto us. Now, God, I decrease that you might increase. God, we repent of our sins. We ask you now to forgive us of all of our trespasses and we forgive those that have trespassed against us. God, use me, free me tonight and cause me to speak as an oracle of God to these, your people and cause his word to be like a seed that is planted in their heart and is watered. It brings forth fruit in its season, some 30, 60, and even 100 fold. God, we appreciate you for it even the more now. Set free and deliver and heal the brokenhearted, cause their eyes to see, and cause them to speak the wonderful works of God. And we appreciate you for it even now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Again, if you have not shared, go ahead and share. God bless you, Brother Donald. It's good to see you. Glad to have you on tonight. Love you, sir. All right. Tonight's message is titled, Love Your Neighbor. Somebody put that in the comments. Love Your Neighbor. That's something we've been taught from Sunday or Sabbath school all the way up to now. To love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. The book of Matthew chapter 24, because as a messenger of God, I have to put these messages in context of the times that we're living in. Because that's how God gives it to me. Um, God bless you, Nita. Love you, sis. Good to see you. Good to see you, Elizabeth. God bless you. The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 14, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I'm going to say that again. This is what the Lord said would happen in these days. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The Lord showed me that because iniquity, somebody put in the comments, iniquity, iniquity is multiplying on the earth because that is happening. The true agape love that God teaches us in the scriptures will begin to uh, grow cold. And I want to take this time out to pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for my brother Donald. Everyone, put your hearts and mind toward him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you would go into the hospital where he is. By this word, send Jehovah Rapha in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, send the angel of your presence. Touch his mouth, God. Repair his jaw. Cause the healing and the recovery to be made swift in the name of Jesus. I bind every foul force that seeks to work against this man and to keep him back from the promises of God. We bind every spirit. And we free him now in Jesus' name. Let the emerald presence of God come into place. Ah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that you're healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't care what the devil say. You're coming out with a straight mouth. All right. I just had to do that because we don't play about ours. We love God and we take care of those that are in our hands. All right. But yes, the Lord says that iniquity is abounding. In the earth, God bless you, Brown Lee. I'm ready for you tomorrow night. Good to see you, Genesis and Shalanda. And my brother said, iniquity is multiplying in the earth. And so this true agape love that God teaches us is growing cold and cold. And so I began to ask God, I said, Lord, why does the growth, why does the growth of iniquity create a society without love? Why are you? deducing that iniquity 
because of because it's going to abound in these days why is it resulting in the love of many waxing cold and the lord so told me that it's because iniquity is lawlessness and because love requires obedience to god's law or god's command because what did jesus say if you love me or god what do you have to do keep his commandments why because god is love and so if god is telling you to do something his commandments are actually loving so if you truly love you will love his commandments you got to see what i'm saying so if there is a lawless generation that is full of iniquity that is multiplying all across the earth because they hate the law of god they will hate love himself therefore they will not keep his commandments and so what are we seeing we're seeing a society that views god's commandments that are written in scripture in both the old and the new testament as hate it will come a day in this in this generation and in this nation of the united states of america where the late where the hate crime or the hate speech laws will intensify beyond measure if i be a man of god it shall come to pass and they will it will be a dangerous thing for those that are not sin of god to speak his word out loud because you'll be charged of hate crimes i'm telling you therefore lawlessness as a result of these days and rebellion against god and his law will rise in the earth and i heard the lord speak to me earlier and he said to me son there is no true love outside of keeping god's commandments i don't care what nobody say there is no true love no true agape love that we have to exemplify and live by and that god showed toward us through his son jesus outside of keeping god's commandments man i have the ultimate example Jesus could say that he loved us all that he wanted to, but the command of the Lord was for him to die. So he had to say, nevertheless, your will be done. He had to align with God's commandments so that the scriptures could be fulfilled, that no greater love has a man than this, that he will give his life. Why? Because that was, that was the command of God on Christ, his life. You must die for the sins of the people. You are the sacrificial offering. And because he loved, he obeyed the commandments. You got to see this. And so I heard the word of the Lord come to me a couple of days ago. And he said to me, son, hear the word of the Lord. And he took me to Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four and five. And the Bible says, hear, listen carefully, O Israel or chosen people of God. The Lord, our God is what? One Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. And with all thy might and with all thy spirit. The Lord spoke to me and told me to hear. Because this is something that I needed to hear to be able to deliver to you tonight. We in this hour of the new wave of glory that we've been talking about. And for those of us in EPC, the greater light that is coming. We in this hour must hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Really, everybody in the body of Christ. Sorry. Siri channel here, I got to say too. <laughs> we must hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And I asked God, what are you saying to your chosen people? And the scripture just told us that the Lord our God is what? One Lord. What does it have to do with love? Why did he say that before he goes into telling us to love him? God is one. Somebody put that in the comments. God is one. Yes, Brown Lee. We must hear, hear, hear. What is God telling us right now? The Bible says that we must live by every word that is proceeding out of the mouth of God. What is he saying now? He's saying God is one. God is alone. And all that is in God is one. You got to hear this. All that is in, including you. You are in God, therefore you are one with him. Therefore, if we are to be his son, like Israel was, he said that I'm calling Israel out of Egypt, I'm calling my son out of Egypt, and same with Christ, his begotten and beloved son, in whom he was well pleased, if we are to be the sons of God, then we are to reflect the sort of oneness that comes through the loving God. 
if we claim to be the sons of God, we must love like God. We want to claim the sonship when it comes to power and demonstration, but we don't want to claim the sonship when it comes to loving our neighbor as ourselves. This is what this is what God is calling the sons into love. You will know the world will know that you are his disciples by how you do what? Love one another. The first part of the Shema, the hero Israel, alludes to God's loving relationship with Christ. Because what did he say? Hero Israel, the Lord our God is what? One. Therefore, if Christ is in God and God is in Christ, he is alluding before Christ was even incarnated that they would be one. Because Jesus even confirmed this in John 10 and 30, where he said, I and my father are one. Christ being the image of God himself and the essence of who God was, was inside of him in its fullness. Therefore, they were one. How many understand what I'm saying tonight? And so because they were one, everything Christ did pleased the father. Ah, basha. And he loved God so much that he made sure that his life exemplified everything that God told him to do. If you've ever been in love with somebody, put amen in the comments. I don't care if it's platonic or, rom or romantic. When you really love somebody, you do everything in your power most of the time to keep them happy and pleased. You want to you wanna make sure they're happy, especially if it's romantic. You're getting ready to get married or you're married and you, you're freshly in love. You want to make sure they're taken care of. Well, Christ loved God so much that he wanted to make sure that everything that God told him to do, he did to his fullest capacity because he loved the Father and the Father loveth the Son. And because of these things, all things were given to him. We want stuff from God, but we don't love God like he tell us to love him. And I asked the Lord, what type of love is God looking for that will make us one with him like Christ was? And he gave me three things. The first thing that we have to do if we want to show God that we love him is to have true intimacy with God. The oneness is the consummation of marriage between the man and the woman. They become one flesh through consummation and through time spent. And what happens is the intimacy between the man and the woman bring them together, both physically and metaphysically. When you have true intimacy with God, there is a metaphysical or spiritual experience that you go through, which brings the same type of ecstasy or greater ecstasy than you even can experience through sexual relations. That's when he says you become known of God. It's just like Adam knew his wife. God will know you. You will become intimate with Christ in that secret place because everybody can't go into the secret chambers of the man and the woman. Therefore, if you have a closet, because that's where he's going to meet you for intimacy. I just felt that. That's where God wants you at. Who has sex outside in a wholesome marriage? The devil is a lie. God wants you to do that stuff in secret. God wants that worship to be in secret so he can bless you openly. That's true intimacy. That's what's coming with how you love God. That's the type of love that he wants to display within your life. The second is alignment. How, I know some of y'all driving on cars with wheels that are not aligned. I know it. It's all right. Your car is crying out for help. But <laughs> it's every now and then you got to get those tires aligned. You got to get them balanced and rotated. Why? So they can drive straight. So nothing will be off balance. The reason why a lot of our lives are not in balance is because we haven't reached alignment with God. God is doing one thing and you're doing the next thing. We are unequally yoked with God. God is trying to pull us this way and we fight in this way. We got to get aligned. What is God telling us to do? How do we align ourselves with God? That means we got to begin to obey the scriptures. We got to pray. We got to pray in the spirit. We got to ask God, what do you want me to do in this situation? You got to go into the scriptures and find the answer. We drive in this car of salvation on two wheels because we are out of alignment. We shaking everything, a wind blow, we're going to flip over because we're out of alignment. God wants us to be aligned with him. Christ was so aligned with God that after his greatest moment, post-ministry, pre-ministry, after being baptized, he was so aligned with God that he was driven into the wilderness to be tried of the devil. 
That don't make sense to normal men. Why would you just get affirmed by God openly and then be sent into the wilderness? Because he loved God enough to be aligned with him. Because he knew that if he could overcome his flesh, the pride of life and the lust of the eye, he would have the power. Some of us want the power, but we don't want to align ourselves with God because his ways are not easy to the flesh, but they're not supposed to be. I know I'm talking tonight. We got to align God. That's what that's what the scripture or the prayer that the Lord taught his disciples was. Let your will be done on earth. Alignment as it is in heaven. We want to bind things on earth and he binding in heaven. We want to lose things on earth and he loses it in heaven. He'll never do it if you're not in alignment with him. Because there is no true connection. We wondering why everything is seemingly out of whack in my life. Well, you need to check your alignment. It's time to go and get diagnosed. Get that car checked. See where those tires at. Some of your tires are going bald because you're out of alignment. You ain't got no traction in life. You got to see this. That's number two. So we need intimacy with God in that secret place. We need alignment. That comes from studying the scriptures. That comes from praying and fasting and seeking God, understanding his will for your life. And the third thing, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, we need to be synchronized with God. It's called synchronization. What does it mean to be in sync? That means God is doing something and you're doing it. Oh my God, I just felt that. The Lord said that he did everything that he saw his father do. How? Because he was in the spirit. So therefore, if he, if he saw the father getting ready to heal someone, he moved in that vein and he went and going to, he went and healed. If he saw the father getting ready to speak to someone, he went and spoke. If he got, if he saw the father withdrawing himself, he withdrew. Why? Because he was in sync. They had simultaneous action. We got to get to a point in our life where we so sensitive to the spirit that we move exactly when God say to move. God tell you to move at one o'clock. Don't move at one on one. Move at one. God said, don't talk right now. Be quiet. Be quiet. Because you got to get to that place where the Father loves you like he loved Jesus. That's called oneness. The Lord our God is what? One Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God to be one with him. If you love something with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, that means you are literally trying to become one because you love it so much. Some of us love video games. Some of us love Watching TV, some of us love eating, some of us love to sleep, some of us love to relax, some of us love our wife, some of us love our kids. We do all these things in the in the flesh to please ourselves and the other person. But what about God? The, the giver of life. It's time to love, y'all. So he said we got to have true intimacy with him. We got to align ourselves with him. And we have to sync with God. Somebody put in the comments, it's time to sync up. S-Y-N-C, sync up. It's time to sync up. It's, it's, it's no longer time to play games with God. We got to love him now. Because the love of many is waxing cold due to iniquity. And maybe this might be tough for a lot of people because they're walking in lawlessness. So what I'm saying is too difficult. Because <laughs> you hate to be told what to do. But if you love God enough, when he tells you to do something, you'll do it. You'll do it. I've been guilty. But you repent and keep going. It's time to sync up. Because syncing up brings the alignment. And the alignment brings the intimacy. You see how all these things are connected? And once we become one with God through our love for him, we can truly show our love for ourselves and then for our neighbor because the first thing god says to do because love is a three-step process love god love yourself love others so if you love god and you're aligning yourself with him that means you love yourself enough to know that this is the way to life therefore out of the love that you have for god it will seep into the love that you have for yourself because now you have reflected who god is in the earth you love God so much that you love yourself enough not to do the things that are not pleasing to him. You have enough love for yourself to take care of your body when you see it uh, going through atrophy and breaking down. 
You love yourself enough not to eat foods that you know are going to cause you to have sickness. You love yourself enough to stop talking to people that are toxic and that bring gossip to you and treat you like a trash can. You love yourself enough to stop posting things that are unseemly and acting like the angels of the Lord are not keeping record of everything that you post on social media. You got to see this. I'm telling y'all, this is what love is about. You love yourself enough to tell your flesh, no, I'm not going to sleep with that woman or that man. You love yourself enough to say, no, I'm not going to watch pornography. No, I'm not going to lay down in this bed when I know I should be exercising. No, I'm not going to let my marriage go down. You got to see this. You love yourself enough because of what? You've already aligned yourself. You already have that intimacy and you're already synchronized. Here, oh Israel, the Lord our God is what? One. We want to be one with God. That means in all aspects of life, we have to be one. All of us, including Glenn Husbands, have to get to this place. That's true oneness. And then we'll reach that glorification that said is talking about in the comments. We will love ourselves when we align ourselves with God because we are the image of God in the earth. We are the Bene Elohim, the sons of God, who are waiting to be manifested. We can never be manifested until we become one. Christ was sit and sat under tutors and governors until the time of his manifestation. He differed, no, he differed nothing from a servant until he was sent. And God sent him when he was one because all righteousness had to be fulfilled. So he was baptized and the spirit of the Lord came upon him and lit upon him and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And he showed his oneness by going into the wilderness. This is what God wants us to do. You become one through death to self. And life unto God. Because we're debtors to him anyways. How many understand Jesus tonight? And so out of the love that we have for ourselves, we will be able to love our neighbor truly. So now you love God. You have that intimacy. You're synced with him. You are aligned with him. And you say, you know what? I can tell myself no. And I can love myself enough to live unto God like he called me to. So now out of that well of love, you can then spring love to others. So now I won't defraud my brother. I won't tell lies to him. I won't cheat. I won't murder. I won't hate somebody because they disagree with my points on life. The devil is a liar. You will love them as Christ loves you because that's that alignment is oneness. And there's three points, him, you, others, three in one. And the Bible, I, some of y'all say, well, Glenn, I don't know if you're talking right. We're going to go to the Bible to prove it. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, can I teach y'all tonight? Luke chapter 10, verse 25 says, and behold, a certain lawyer, and they took this to court. They took this case to court. And he stood up and tried to try Jesus and said, master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What shall I do, master? And he said unto him, what is written? In the law, how readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and you shall live. What did I, if you want to live, you want to overcome death in this earth, you have to love the brethren. You see why that's, the Bible says you pass from death to life because of your love, because you're one with God. You can even get to loving them unless you first love God in yourself. So therefore, that's how you pass from death to life. Jesus is telling us if we want to live, we have to love God, ourselves, and others. But I asked the Lord a question. I said, Lord, many of us love ourselves and many of us love our friends and many of us claim to love you. But who is really our neighbor? Who is our neighbor? Who is your neighbor? I'm not talking about the next door one either. Who is your neighbor? Well, the lawyer had the same mentality Glenn Husband's got. He said in verse 29, but he willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, who is my neighbor? <laughs> and Jesus answered and said unto him, a parable, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among thieves and which stripped him of his raiment 
and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. This is a man that was destroyed. He lost everything, left to the side for dead. And by chance, there came a certain priest. So some of y'all, man, y'all got the garments, boy. Y'all the priest. Man, we, we know the scriptures, boy. We got the power. We got the anointing. We, we worship in the temple. We got executive offices in the church. You know, we've been in the church for all these years. We the priest. And when he's when when we saw him, the priest, we passed by on the what? Other side. Did that seem like somebody that really loves God? And likewise, a Levite. So these are one of the musicians. Boy, I'm telling you, <laughs> we say the musicians are the Levites. The Levites, when he was at the place, he came and looked at him. So at least he looked at him. And but then when he saw him, I look, he said, you know what? I'm gonna just go the other way. They ain't got nothing to do with me. But a certain Samaritan, someone that was not a Jew, someone that hated the Jews, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, what did he have, y'all? Compassion. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. And set him on his beast and brought him to a hotel and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, not only did he do that, he did second mile service. He took out two pence and gave it to the host and said unto him, take care of this man. And whatsoever you spend more, when I come back, I will repay you. So put it on my tab. And the question that the Lord asked the man was this. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? I got a question, just like the Lord got a question. Which of the three are you? Are you the priest? Are you the Levite? Or are you the Samaritan? And in most people's mind, they want to be the Samaritan because that's the good guy. But in reality, most of us are the priest or the Levite. Let's just keep it 100. We see somebody that we don't know and feel that they may be a little crazy. We walk away. That includes me. I do it all the time. But this is what Jesus said. And he said, he that showed mercy on him was the neighbor. <laughs> he showed mercy. But then this is what Jesus told us to do. Go. Go. And do likewise. And so I looked up what the word neighbor mean in the Christian context. And it literally means a man. You know, it says any other man. This is your neighbor. It is any other man irrespective of their nation, their religious faith, with whom that with whom we live or with whom we have the chance to meet. The church could be full of people right now. And we loved our neighbors as ourselves. But what stops us from talking to people? John tells us it's fear. Come on, let's just keep it 100, y'all. We fear the outcome. We fear being uncomfortable. We just say, you know what? It's easier to keep going. And I'm not saying you got to stop by everybody that's on the side of the road. But there are some times I know that heart tug on you. There are some times you're in the grocery store and you may see somebody from a different nation. That could be the time that they needed you the most, but you kept walking by. If we don't talk to them, and we're supposed to be the light of the world, the world will, and they'll be in darkness. We act like the we're, we act like the church is already won. We act like there's not a war. We act like we're not in competition with the enemy. We are, and he's winning. Why? Because we are so passive. We walk in the other way. How can you be the light in the world and nobody ever sees you and it comes into contact with you? And this is what John said for those that fear that type of contact. There is no fear in love. <laughs> but perfect love, that threefold love that I talked about, it casts out fear. Because fear has torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. So if you're still walking in that fear and that stuff is stopping you, from witnessing to that person and just showing love and walking on the other side of the street and doing U-turns like Liz said in the comments. 
We have not been made perfect in love. We're still immature in that area in our life. And so the Lord spoke and told me that the more you love and have compassion, the fear to step toward someone will go away. If you knew that your grandmother was in a house on fire, would you walk away from the house and say, it's, you know, she'll be all right, she'll die anyways? Or would you try to do everything in your power to get her out and call the fire and fighters? Some of you are running the house to get her out because you deem her to be your neighbor. But what about the foreigner? What if it was in that moment that because of your action, that foreigner, that foreigner turned to Christ? Y'all had an experience because the Lord gave me this message a few days ago. And literally the day after he gave me the message, I went to Clarkston, Georgia, which is said by Time Magazine to be the most diverse two square miles in the entire country. There are people from literally all across the world that are refugees in this place that are in Clarkston. And I got a chance to go and serve that community. And the pastor there, he doesn't claim to have deep revelation, but he does claim to have love. And he literally has a church of all nations. Quite literally, because li people from all nations are there. And four months at the beginning of the year, there were 82 million people that were displaced because of different situations as war and just um, corruption within their society. And in four months, that number skyrocketed by 20 million to over 100 million people because of the war in Ukraine. And many of them, when they are displaced from the time they apply for refugee status to the time that they can get settled in a foreign country and able to stand on their two feet, it takes on average 17 years for that to happen. And then once they settle in the place, many of them don't have their family members and many of them have nothing. Many of them have to take time to learn the language. And guess how much time the United States give people to do that? 180 days. That's only six months. It takes most people years to even just learn the language, let alone get a job and be self-sufficient. They only have six months. What if it was that the Christian community that we claim to be, with all the power in the Holy Ghost, all the tongue talking, all the gifts, we have all the apostles and the prophets, the pastors, the evangelists, and the teachers. We have all the revelation and the mysteries, all the power. What if we were the first faces that they saw? And with a smile, with food and with water, sometimes with lodging if God calls you to do it. What if it was us? How much more effective would we be in the earth? We could turn, we could turn the tables because we would truly be loving our neighbors. That's what God is calling us to do. We got to. The city of God would be filled with people from all over the world. If you don't love other people, you won't love heaven because everybody's going to be there. <laughs> people from every nation, every tribe, every tongue, people that you make fun of now, they're going to be up there. Chinese folks, Taiwanese, European, the white folks that black people hate and the black people that white folks hate, Mexican, Latino, Hispanic, Russian, Indian, Australian, people from everywhere are going to be in heaven. All worshiping God, saying, holy, 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 are you Lord of God Almighty? The earth is full of your glory. They're going to be saying that. He who was, is, and is to come. But yet we so focus on our little tribe. God said, love your neighbor. And I'm, in, I'm, going to, I'm ready to close now. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, beloved, this is verse 7, beloved, let us love one another for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god if you love that tells me that you love if you love people you clearly have to have some type of love for god and we're not talking about the superficial love that's easy to turn off and on we're talking about the love that requires sacrifice the love that was the love that is without dissimulation that love the charity, the first Corinthians 13 love. That's what I'm talking about. First John 4 and 10 says, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation, the atonement for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also 
to love our neighbors, love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells within us and his love is perfected in us. How can you claim to love God and you haven't seen him? You only see God through his image in the earth. So if you can't love me who looks like God, how can you truly say that you love God? And hereby know that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. We claim to got the power of the Holy Ghost. We speak in more tongues than anybody, but we hate our neighbor. We hate our own church folks. We can't even talk to them when they're going through a bad day. We make fun of them. We don't pray about them. We gossip. We float text messages verse before calling a prayer meeting. Or maybe it doesn't require a prayer, prayer. Maybe it requires you just going to sit with them and actually learning about them. How many people actually know what people are like in the church? We know what people do in church, but what are they actually like? What are their passions? What are their goals in life? What do they do? We don't know that because we don't truly love people. We just love what they can offer us. God says that we have the spirit. We're supposed to love them like Christ loves us. Christ knows everything about us. And we have seen and do testify that a father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwells in him and he dwells now in God. And we have known and believe that the love of God, that God has to us, God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. You can't claim to be in the Lord. You can't claim to be all in the heavens, but can't love me in the earth. That's impossible. God has to see that. Or, you, or the love of God is not in you. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have what? Boldness in the day of judgment. So when God comes back, you won't be worrying about if you're going to make it because you did what God said to do tonight. Here is what the Spirit is saying. Love God, yourself, and your neighbor as he loves us. Because as he is currently, so are we in this world. We are supposed to be just like Jesus in our day-to-day, -day, not only when we go to church, we have to start loving folks. I challenge everybody that's watching this live to step toward somebody instead of stepping away. I challenge you to stop gossiping and pray first. Maybe make a phone call that you know you need to make. God dropping them folks in your mind, not for you to get mad, but to talk to them. We all guilty. Some of us would rather let, it, let the situation go up under the rug so we won't have to confront it. But if you love something, you won't let it die like that. Some of you know you got to reconcile with your wives and husbands. It's time to do it. It's time to love your neighbor. Some of you got problems with your parents. It's time to love them. Some of you have problems with people on your job. It's time to love them. And I'm not telling you to go and kiss up to them. I'm telling you to be real. I'm telling you to do what Jesus would do. Because so are we as him in this world can we pray father in the name of jesus we love you so much god we hear what your word is saying tonight we're convicted spirit of truth would do this to us and reprove us of righteousness now god be with us as we take the first step toward those whom we don't know god we know that we have the power and greater is he that is in us that is in the world so we're not afraid because wherein is love perfected by the spirit of god that dwells within us now, Lord, be with us as we move forward, cause his word to continue to tug on the hearts of the people, cause them to change and be transformed into the image of your dear son, God. And we appreciate you for it even the more now, Lord. God, we pray expressly now for the revival in Gaston and cause it to be a success for your glory. Cause souls to be transformed and be saved and be filled with the Holy Ghost and given the power. Cause fresh revelation and illumination to come and cause the angel of your presence to dwell amongst us as we go forth in the ministry of the word. And we appreciate you for it even the more now. Bless those that are traveling. Bless those that are in this world still dealing with the effects of COVID and this war. And we appreciate you for it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. All right. I love y'all so much tonight. If you want to support the ministry, you can. Use our cash app, dollar sign, the kingdom move. But remember, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the income I love you. Be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See you next week.